Today we're taking a look at these NCAA B matches, which are happening on Tuesday, November 29, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos. Also, check out our perks and join the High Stakes membership. Joining the High Stakes membership is easy, is cheap, but it will help a lot in the growth process of this channel. Plus if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end, so you don't miss any of our picks. The Orange followed up their two-game winning streak by losing their last two games. They will try to snap their streak with a win over the Fighting Alini, which will give them their third win in their last five games, and their first win over a ranked opponent this season. Syracuse is averaging 74.8 points per game. They scored 72 points in their last game, making 40% of their field goals and 25% of their three-pointers. Justin Taylor led the Orange with 25 points and 3 rebounds. Chris Bell finished with 14 points and 1 rebound, while Jesse Edwards added 12 points and 21 rebounds. Syracuse is giving up 70 points per game. They gave up 73 points in their last game and will need to do a better job if they want to win this game. The Fighting Alini bounced back from their loss to Virginia with a win over the Lions in their last game. They will try to keep the momentum going with a win over the Orange, which will give them their second win in a row and sixth win in their last seven games. Illinois is averaging 84.7 points per game. They scored 92 points in their last game, making 58.1% of their field goals and 36.7% of their three-pointers. Sky Clark led the Fighting Alini with 19 points, 3 rebounds, and 4 assists. RJ Melendez finished with 17 points and 4 rebounds, while Terran Shannon Jr. finished with 16 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists. Illinois has played well defensively, giving up 61.5 points per game. They gave up 59 points in their last game and will need to keep it up if they want to get the win. The Fighting Alini have won 5 of their last 6 games. They are playing very well offensively, scoring more than 80 points per game while making over 50% of their shots. They are very aggressive on the offensive glass and will get a lot of extra scoring opportunities against the Orange. They are facing a Syracuse team that has struggled defensively, giving up at least 70 points in 5 of their 6 games and won't have trouble scoring against them. The Orange have lost 3 of their last 5 games. They aren't very good offensively, barely scoring more than 70 points in their last 3 games. They haven't shot the ball well from the field and don't rebound the ball as well as the Fighting Alini, so don't expect them to get a lot of extra scoring opportunities. Even though they do a good job protecting the ball, they are facing a team that is averaging more than 10 steals per game, while holding opponents under 60 points at home, so expect them to have a hard time keeping up with the Fighting Alini in this game. Go with Illinois to cover the spread. Take Illinois Fighting Alini. Illinois is once again a very good defensive team, and Syracuse has struggled offensively against even mediocre competition this year. The Fighting Alini have limited three of their first six opponents to less than 60 points, and Illinois has been a very good defensive team with Underwood as the coach for years. Illinois has also been inconsistent at times offensively despite their 5-1 record. The Fighting Alini only scored 60 points at home against Virginia, and Illinois also struggled offensively for parts of the game against UCLA as well. Syracuse has been decent defensively despite their 3-3 record, the Orange held St. John's to just 40.3% shooting from the field. Take the under here. UCSB vs Duquesne. UC Santa Barbara has played solid basketball in the first few weeks of the season for Joe Pasternak as they took down North Alabama in their previous contest. The Gauchos improved to 4-1 on the season and they head east looking for their first road win of the season here. 
against North Alabama, UC Santa Barbara started slowly, trailing 8-0-3 minutes into the game. The Gauchos remained down 8 with 11-29 to play in the opening half, before regrouping to take a 41-37 advantage at intermission. In the second half, UC Santa Barbara led by just one before going on an 8-2 run to take a 61-54 lead, with 10-51 to go. The Gauchos didn't let the Lions closer than five the rest of the way as they pulled away down the stretch. UC Santa Barbara shot 61.1% from the floor, including 13 of 21 from three-point range, and won the rebounding battle 34-23 to help offset going 10 of 17 at the charity stripe. A.J. Mitchell led six Gauchos in double figures as he put up 17 points and seven assists in the win. Business against Alabama State at home in thigh previous contest. The Dukes improved to 5-1 on the season, which is more impressive considering the 2021-22 version of the team was only 6-24 overall. Against Alabama State, Duquesne used a 10-3 run over the final 3-15 of the first half to take a 9-point lead and pulled away in the second half. Leading by 5 with 14.07 to play, the Dukes reeled off a 24-4 run to go up 68-43 en route to the win. Duquesne shot 46.4% from the field, including 8 of 21 from 3-point range, and held Alabama State to 31.1% shooting to offset losing the rebounding battle 45-37. Dave Day Grant led the way for the Dukes with 23 points and 7 rebounds in the win. Both teams have gotten off to strong starts, though the competition has been less than fierce for the most part. The Gauchos' best win was over Fresno State, who is ranked 136th in the Ken Palm rankings, while Duquesne's best triumph came on a neutral floor over a Colgate team ranked 106 currently. None of the other wins by either side have come over a team ranked better than 215th in the rankings. With that said, Duquesne has been effective offensively, as the additions of guys like Grant and Brewer through the transfer portal really bolstered their rotation. UC Santa Barbara is still a solid mid-major program, and they have a variety of guys that can fill up the scoresheet. In the end though, we saw the Gauchos lose on the road at Northern Arizona in their lone road tilt this season. Duquesne has played well, especially at home, and that, coupled with the time difference, gives them the advantage here. Take the Dukes at home. The Gauchos are scoring 70.8 points per game and shooting 45% as a team. They are an offense where the whole truly is greater than the sum of its parts. They are assisting on 60% of their made field goals, 36th in the country. The Gauchos like to get the ball inside and are getting 42.2% of the scoring production from inside the paint. Duquesne has been holding opponents to under 50% in the key. They also grab 9.3 offensive boards per game, and the Dukes have been horrible at keeping opponents off the offensive glass. In all this is a Gaucho's offense that likes to hold the ball deep into the shot clock, but is very fluid and cohesive. They are able to get the ball inside often and corral misses for quick putbacks. UCSB is shooting fair from 